camera on. <laughs> and it says that we are live. Awesome, awesome. So I'm just oh, this. We've got there. <laughs> Don't know what all that was about. Okay, so let me just uh, check on the page that it is Well, live. hopefully everybody, we are live. We've had a few techie issues today. So we've had to go from Italy to the UK and then back to Italy and now back to the UK again. So I think we are <laughs> there. So I'll uh, hand over to Susie for the introductions. Hi everybody, welcome to today's show. Sorry to keep you waiting while we've had those technical issues. So for those that are watching, do pop in, say hello, let us know that you're there. We have a really special guest today, Jonathan Weeks, who lives in Kent. He is a shaman. He um, holds drumming workshops, drumming circles, teaches you how to make shamanic drums. And he is going to talk a little bit about what shamanism is today and tell us about his courses and classes and all of those things. So feel free to come in, ask him questions. I will have to let him know what the questions are, but do come in. We want to ask questions. Um, he's a mastermind of what he does. So, you know, do come in and ask those questions to him. We will also be doing some readings at the end um, of the show as well to give you a little bit of guidance, insight or clarity into what's going on in your life as well. So hi, Marion. Hi, hi. Jordan. Lovely to have you both with us today. So hopefully we've got quite a few viewers. So hopefully they're going to come in, say hello, let us know that they're there. Hi, Linda. Hi, Willow. Lovely to have you with us. So we're going to let Jonathan talk a little bit about himself, his business, how he's now taking his business online with the current climate. So how he's adjusting to different things, because I feel that lots of people have been struggling with not being able to work within groups, with, um, you know, contact with people. So a lot of people need to look at how they can work online. And Jonathan is one of those people, how he can bring his expertise to his tribe through using online uh, platforms um, as well. So I think that's something that's really, really interesting for a lot of people that have their own businesses. Don't you agree, Marion? Yeah, yeah, it is. And where people are used to working face-to-face, -face, working in groups, and even sort of going out networking and doing stuff, it's a whole new world that we've, um, we've come into. So it's going to be really interesting to see, Jonathan, how you have adapted and how you've changed to the current climate so I know that I'm really excited and really looking forward to it so yeah definitely definitely hi Debbie lovely to have you with us so do ask some questions I'm going to hand over to Jonathan so he can talk to us a little bit more about shamanism and the thing that he does all right thank you very much well thanks first of all for having me on the on the the, the show this afternoon to, to talk with you all um, yeah, the, the things then that I'm going to talk about, firstly, introducing um, shamanism. So we, we're all understanding what we mean by the by the term. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what I do generally in terms of uh, with heron drums, with, uh, with drumming circles um, and with using and making shamanic drums. And yes, we were just chatting before this to do with uh, kind of what's happening now in terms of uh, sharing these practices and how I'm continuing to do that online. So, yeah, happy to talk a bit about that as well. Um, so firstly, just in terms of what shamanism is, shamanism, um, and, and just kind of particular to kind of say where I'm at in terms of uh, what, what I do, I work with shamanic practices, but I wouldn't say that I'm a shaman. And I'll kind of, I'll get onto specifics kind of about, about that in a, in a moment. Um, but I do work with what's called shamanic practices and shamanism generally, um, in terms of the kind of the wide mix of different ways of working spiritually and, and spiritual practice, shamanism is a, it describes a method, describes an approach to um, working with spirit, where we look to work with practices where we change our state of awareness, change our state of consciousness, and move out of kind of the, the, the normal kind of day-to-day -day mind and awareness that we have, so that we can journey into into the spirit worlds, into dream worlds, in order to connect with, to meet spirit, um, to build a relationship with spirit, to seek out guidance or go to meet them for healing. So 
the this this way of work practice are um are generally seen as being the oldest spiritual practices that there are seem to have been kind of going for uh tens of thousands of years and seem to have existed on every single continent that there is all around the world um in many places in the world there is still living shamanic traditions that are unbroken for however many uh, hundreds or thousands of years that they've been going there but we've largely seen these practices and traditions lost in the western world um, the places where they have continued where they exist are um, generally in indigenous cultures um, so we're kind of looking at uh, uh, earth-centered cultures uh, traditional communities that are still living very much in connection with the land um, that live in uh, with a, a, what's called an animistic way of, of seeing the world. What this means is that they, they see the world as alive with spirit, that there is it's a world around them is inhabited with spirit. Contrast that to, to kind of the world that we've, many of us have grown up in, which is largely materialistic world, not meaning that in terms of uh, uh, the kind of the, the usual way that we kind of think of the term materialistic, but the idea is we see the world as matter, we see the world as, as physical stuff, mm. um, rather than realize, you know, we, we, we look at a, a tree and it's kind of, okay, that's just some stuff there that we can build with or we can burn for, for fuel and that mountain is something we can just dig out and, you know, there might be something in there we can get some precious metals from. Traditional cultures, um, that have an animistic way of seeing will see that there is a spirit of the forest, that there are spirits in the trees, that there is a spirit of the mountain, spirits of the lakes, spirits of the rivers. And the role of the shaman within those communities, within those traditional communities, is they are the intermediary for their, their community, between the community and the spirits. So that when they are needing uh, uh, guidance or direction, they can connect with the spirits of the place in which they inhabit. Um, when they're needing to do healing work for people, they can um, connect with those spirit, uh, those healing spirit guides and bring that healing through from those, those journeys in the other worlds to bring them back to for the people who are needing them. And there are kind of many uh, kind of traditional communities around the world that where this uh, where these traditions have carried on. You know, the word shaman itself comes from Siberia, comes from the Evenk people in, in Siberia. Um, and in Siberia and Mongolia, there are kind of living traditions of, of, uh, of, of shamanism there. In around kind of a lot of the kind of the rural parts of, of Asia, kind of a, a, away from kind of some of the heavy, heavier developed kind of areas. So down into Mongolia, over into the Altai Mountains of Kazakhstan, um, and all around there are a lot of kind of uh, living traditions of shamanism. We see um, living traditions of shamanism right up in the very kind of northern parts of Scandinavia of the Sami people. We see it within um, within traditions in South America, within the jungle, uh, within the Amazon jungle, there are many there who work with practices where they alter their states in order to connect with the spirits. And we see uh, bits, other parts that would be described as shamanic or, 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 or uh, yeah, that would be described as shamanic in cultures like North American traditions where they are strongly animistic <coughs> they, they, they do see the spirit of the world around them. Not all Native American uh, peoples use practices that we would describe as shamanic, that are using the, these methodologies or practices to alter their states. Um, but the other, these other cultures and traditions, many in, in Africa, particularly in West Africa, uh, the Australian Aboriginal traditions, in uh, East Asia there's a lot of um, uh, peoples who are still living with a lot of traditional animistic uh, ways of seeing the world and so the, the shaman in in communities where they do have a, a a form of shamanism the shaman's role is to be the intermediary for spirits there so here in in western kind of contemporary society in in, in these kind of developed societies um where shamanism has come in here it's looking at 
way pe people have approached it is ways that we can be working with these practices and traditions um, to be able to connect with spirit and build relationship with spirit for same reasons for guidance and for healing um, but there's also another side of it which is how we can learn through these practices and traditions so that we can be in what's referred to as right relationship with the right relationship with the land big contrast in what i described with uh, the animistic cultures that have living shamanic traditions compared to where we are now in terms of seeing the world as, as stuff that we can go out and exploit and take as opposed to seeing the world around as a living, um, conscious, aware uh, bunch of spirits that we are living in relationship with. And so a lot of uh, people who are working within shamanism are looking at how we can teach these practices and these approaches so that we can be in right relationship. We can be in a better relationship with the environment around, becoming more and more salient and more and more important as we go on, as, we, as we're seeing what's the, the, been the impact of uh, living not in right relationship with the world around us, where we're living in a, 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 a take, take, take relationship with the land and that imbalance and what that's 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 kicking up for us so um you know it's it's an approach where people are working with it now for connecting with the land and connecting with the spirit of the land to be in communication to connection in relationship with the spirits around us um and one of the things that's that has come into it, you know, like I said, you know, in, in a lot of uh, kind of Western developed societies, we don't have these living traditions, but we once did. If we look back at kind of what people might describe as uh, Celtic traditions, the term Celtic is, is a complicated one, but we kind of get a general gist of what we mean when we say the word um, Celtic, um, but also ancient British and ancient European traditions. We see a lot, a lot of signs that we definitely lived and our ancestors definitely lived in far more of an animistic way. And some other signs that suggest that there were elements of shamanism here. So there's ways in which working with these practices have been connecting us uh, with our ancestors and with our ancestral traditions. And in the past, it's been uh, a, a kind of a looking at the, the indigenous cultures and not necessarily uh, uh, kind of building the right relationship in how we, we Kind of cherry pick and take 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 from different cultures for those practices and traditions so um we're still kind of recognizing our debt to indigenous peoples for for what we what we have now in terms of uh, understanding of shamanic shamanic practices um and part of that now is is how we can reconnect with our ancestral traditions here and and as well kind of build that relationship with with the 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 old ways here so so that's that's kind of a bit of an introduction on on shamanism uh, specifically shamanism itself i talked about shamanic drums or mentioned shamanic drums at the start because the use of drums is something that is very very common within contemporary shamanism as it is in a number of places around the world as a tool or as a method in order to enter these kind of these shamanic states in order to connect with spirit and there are particular ways of working with the drum and particular drum rhythms um, where we can alter our state of awareness and we can go into these uh, these states of trance where we can connect uh, and meet these spirit allies, these spirit helpers and connect with spirit. And so a big part of my work is, is I, I am a drum maker uh, and I also hold uh, workshops in um, for how to, to make the drum but also how to work with the drum and how to use uh, these techniques and practices to, to build and connect with the, uh, the spirits around you and those spirits who are, who are working with you and guiding you. So the drums used in a number of different ways. A lot of people uh, maybe have heard of drumming circles. We, we drum together in a circle and you know, the, the amount of, of energy that is built up from a room full of people drumming really makes it easy uh, to, to go into these, uh, say, meditative states for, for that with drumming circles, but go into these states where we're able to co connect with these guides, with these, uh, these, these healing and helping spirits. The drums are used for healing. There's a lot of research specifically looking at how the use of drums um, 
in itself just by having that sound does a lot physiologically for us but drums are used also for healing in terms of how they can help us uh, be more connected more grounded um, how they can help us uh, in letting go of things that we don't need to be holding on to and how they can help connect us with things that we're needing um, that we're needing more of and the drums are used for a specific practice called shamanic journeying which is kind of the common thread in what I've been describing through this where the drum is used so that we can go into these these uh, trance states and journey to into these these other worlds these spirit worlds to connect with um, to connect with those guides and the healers and teachers and inspirers that work with us so yeah my 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 work and my workshops generally usually is uh, traveling around the country uh, working with groups um, with the drum making it's recognizing that you know these are a um, these are a sacred tool and like I said you know from the animistic point of view everything has a spirit and the drum itself when you create a sacred tool in ceremony um, you're doing it in, with respect and acknowledging the spirit of that sacred tool and so we we hold the drum in ceremony um, so that we start the relationship with with our drum in an honorable and respectful way and coming from a place of gratitude and 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 respect and integrity um well, i also hold workshops looking at um where i teach these specific practices about how to use the drum to build relationships with guides people for example who um, have worked with meditation practices and and struggle with meditation practices find working with the drum you have that 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 drum there that is part of the you know the the, the term in 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 some traditions is they refer to it as the shaman's horse in that you ride on the back of the rhythm into the journey so uh, it helps it can often kind of you know be very helpful for people when they're developing their kind of meditative and journey in practice um, but also for people who are looking to have a, a, a stronger connection with their guides and a stronger connection with the spirits of place around them. Um, it, the drum is kind of a, a tool that I, I teach for people how to use that. Um, but also I, I've been running development courses where we go on from the drum and look at other practices and traditions and particularly ones. Um, my Ancient Roots course was one that we uh, look at the ancient British practices that, that we can see where there's kind of overlap into these shamanic traditions and look at how we can be working with shamanic practices that are, are, are rooted in the, the old traditions of this land. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that goes from the general introduction to shamanism into the specifics of, of what I do. And, um, and yeah, at the moment we're, we're working with what we can do technology wise. Um, I've been running online drumming circles um, where we've been trying every different way of doing it. I've, I've had different cameras pointing at me um, for it, where it, most of the time it's been a drum along with, um, but we've, we've had say 100, 130 people at times who have been joining in. And there's been something quite incredible. We, I'm used to the feeling of being in a room with lots of drums and feeling that vibration in the room. And uh, now the difference is only hearing my drum, but actually feeling that connection with that wider circle of people drumming has actually been really, really quite profound. It's, it's brought in a kind of a different sensation to it, a different uh, sense to it. Um, and yeah, a lot of uh, different ways of working online. As I said, my, um, you know, there may be specific questions on, on this, but you know, a lot of the uh, practices that I teach are very practical things. They need kind of a bit of uh, direction and demonstration. So there was a kind of a moment where, well, oh, hang on, I can't teach this online. Um, but actually in terms of these things for people implementing these into uh, some sort of a daily practice, I am finding with, with uh, people that it, it is working better in that way. So it's not just something they do on a weekend workshop and then don't necessarily introduce at home. It's uh, we're actually able to see how we can introduce these and integrate these, these practices and ways of working into everyday life. So um, there has been a kind of a gift in looking at how we, we turn things to being online with these, these different kind of uh, platforms for being able to share and show and demonstrate and discuss and uh, check back in with and feedback on uh, how we're getting on with it. So, um, 
it, it means that I've been able to take bits and kind of put them into sort of bite size uh, kind of introductions to and this is how to do this and this is a way of working with this. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I, 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 there's, there's always kind of uh, gifts within there. And I think this has been one of the things that I've seen with people is people being able to take what we're doing and integrate that into, into their home, into their home life, uh, rather than it being just on, just something they do in a workshop. Fantastic. We do have some questions for you, John. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So I'm just gonna say a couple of hellos. Hi, Nikki. Uh, hi, Shati. I still can't say it. Hi, Esfita. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Gloria. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Debbie. Okay, so Linda would like to know what brought you to shamanism. Um. So, what brought me into it was uh, very early on in my journey. My um. I did start with an earth-based spiritual interest. I was interested in druidry. And I had started doing a little bit of a research in Druidry and actually now where, where I'm looking at ancient British practices, it's sort of bringing me full circle looking back at Druidry in many ways. Um, but in my early spiritual development, I was working with kind of a, a kind of a broad picture of spiritual development and I was working within um, with healing, with energy healing. And I started working in ways um, naturally intuitively within that, that the people that I was working with hadn't kind of weren't familiar with and hadn't seen before. And people who did kind of notice them hips and saying, oh, that's very shamanic and that's very shamanic. Um, so it, it sent me down a route of wanting to, to look more about that and find out a bit more about that. Um, some of the specific things that, um, that I'd been doing um, related to uh, specific shamanic techniques that are done uh, in, in, in healing uh, practices and ceremonies um by uh, some peoples of the ecuadorian amazon so i went there a number of times over a number of years to go and work with teachers there and explore that and coming back here looking at how you know a lot of the things that i, I learned there were very much part of and within their culture and related to their culture and traditions that coming back here it it's not immediate to kind of look and see how it translates to here so i spent a few years after that working at how what I learned there relates to to me here and and living here and uh, I worked with a number of other uh, people in working with sharing shamanic practices and and uh, sharing these sharing kind of different practices and techniques here in the UK so it's uh, it, it was largely a kind of an intuitive um, uh, set of happenings that, that sent me off down the path as it were it's interesting how because some of the things that I do could be classed as witchy they could be classed as shamanic they could be classed you know so many different ways that you can look at them so I think that I'm kind of looking at where I'm going right now mm -hmm. and what practices from which overall names like whether it's witchy whether it's shamanic and where it is that I'm going um with different things so I think it's quite interesting that Marion and I always seem to be on the same path it doesn't yeah. matter where we're going we always meet back yeah. at the same path don't we, we do. which is really interesting so I'm going to let you talk for a second Marion because this isn't live at the moment right. in the mm. group one of the things that I found, um, what I found interesting, John, was where you said, and, and, and it really rung a bell with me, where you sort of go and do a weekend workshop and then you go home and you don't put the practices in. Because I know that I've been and done weekend workshops and things and then gone home and not done um, some of the practices and the things. But seeing how where you've brought it online, it, you can continue and, and help the people you're working with to bring it into a daily practice. So I found that really interesting. It's it's kind of one of the, the natural things with it because if people are learning at home, if people are learning on their kind of their their, their these platforms at home, um, you know, their their opportunity to go and practice it and and give it a go is going to be in their 
home in their garden in their kind of places nearby that they can go to so um you know it's then much easier for them to return to kind of go oh i'll do that again tomorrow or i'll do that in a couple of days time or i'll make that a weekly thing um you know, and I, I know I've done it on kind of weekends mm-hmm. that I've gone along and I thought, fantastic, I want to do this. And it seems like such a big job to do the first step of yeah. starting to do it at home. And yeah. uh, it, it, it's, you kind of, you know, if, if we're doing this kind of, uh, this, this sharing, this teaching online, it means that people do pick it up at home. They kind of go, right, okay, I'm being, you know, part of the work now is that I go and do this. And they've, they've given it a go then. And, and also a feeling that you can chunk it up a bit more rather than having it a full on, you know, jam packed two day weekend workshop. You can actually chunk it up a bit more so that it is perhaps not quite so mind blowing for people to pick up and to learn. But also with it being in sort of like, I don't know, a week of chunk sized pieces or it gets them into doing it on a daily basis. Yeah. is my feeling yeah yeah definitely also, it they can reference back to it can't they if there's mm. something that they didn't understand or they missed in the workshop because someone was talking or whatever reason they can go back and they can keep visiting that particular module or whatever it is mm. over and over again till they understand it completely so it's a great way to move forward definitely i've got a couple of questions from nikki here so if you're watching in the intuitive creator do pop over to my page so that i can see your questions feel free to ask as many questions um, <clears throat> as you have regarding this so nikki's first question was how you pronounce shamanism is it shay or shah um yeah, there's, there's, I, I hear both on quite a lot of occasions, and I've heard somebody say before that um, there's uh, one which is um, like shamanism, I think, I, I don't know which way around it actually uh, is, but one of them is more commonly the way that it's pronounced in um, North America, and then there's different ways that it's pronounced here. Um, I don't know the way that the, um, uh, the Evenki people would specifically pronounce the word that is the root word for it, which is from Anna. Um, I don't know if that's the the actual pr- pronunciation of that, but both are, you know, they're, they're, there's not one of them that's particularly wrong. Both are used quite as often as each other. Um, I think maybe different sides of the water yeah. as well with it. Yeah. So people are going to know whichever way you pronounce yeah. it. They're gonna that's know that's what, what you're mean. talking about, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, um, Nikki's next question is, do you still have or do you still use the first drum that you made? Uh, the first drum that I made, yes, I do. Um, I'll introduce you to it actually, because I've yes, got I'm using all my drums here for, uh, for for circles and groups. Um, the first one that I made for myself working with is this one here. It's a uh, a, a deer drum. The uh, hoop on this one, I believe, was maple, um, and this is as off. I'm going to put the drum down because it's getting a lot of echo off it as a, a, into the microphone. Um, d- different drums. The drum, as I say, a drum has its own spirit. It has its own sense, and you build your kind of uh, as you build your connection with it, you get a sense of how you are to work together. And when I began working with this drum, this was my my one and only drum. It came with me in healing work that I was doing uh, in drum circles um, and working with groups. Um, after a while, when I also had another drum, it was then very clear that now this is only for healing. So this is this is now what I refer to this as my healing drum. And there's something quite special with this one. Uh, you may have been able to spot this this mark here. Yeah. That's actually a hole in that one there. And it's there, there is a, a kind of a tradition in drum making in North American um, drum making traditions where they refer to that as the spirit hole. And as the drum is played, as the drum is playing, there is a puff of air that moves backwards and forwards through that um, as the drum head vibrates. And why that is quite kind of quite special for, for me and with me about it is that um, 
the, the, the particular healing practice that sent me over to South America that got me on the path of shamanism was something working with the breath, very particularly working with the breath. So to have a drum that is also breathing, um, yeah. that is there quite clearly as the healing drum is, is, is quite special there for me for working with it. The drum that I use um, most often with groups is, uh, is this drum here. And this one here, it's a, an, a horse drum with an oak frame. And uh, this one is, is the one I tend to travel around with working with, uh, working with groups. The horse drum, um, as I said, the, the, the drum is referred to as the shaman's horse in relation to that journey and that journey into the other worlds. And um, so it's, it's what I often kind of use as my journeying drum. Uh, so when I'm doing a journey for myself, I will often use that, that drum there. Um, there's all sorts of other drums in the background, including yeah, kind of ones you. that I use for specific ceremonies. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of a big summer celebration drum, a small travel drum, and other ones that are um, drums that are ones that are on the on the online shop on the website. Yeah, awesome. So I did a drum making course with you. Gosh, I reckon that probably was six or seven years ago oh, that I did that um, in Ashford. I got the drum down and left it in the other room to show you. But um, I have to say the drum making courses are awesome. Absolutely fantastic day. So if you get the opportunity to do one, if you're local to Kent, Glastonbury or... Yeah, so the ones I'm doing, Glastonbury, Kent and Avebury are the, the three places <laughs> that I'm doing. And uh, the next ones, um, you know, all being well, uh, will be uh, September, October, November is the, the, the mm. when they're happening. Hopefully, Lovely. fingers crossed, we will have escaped by then. <laughs> oh, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so does anyone else have any other questions? Hi, Sandy, to ask Jonathan about his drums, a shamanic journey um, or anything else to do with shamanism. Now, you do have your own website, don't you, John? Yeah, so uh, the, the main one that I'll, uh, I'll name now is, is uh, the drum website is herondrums.co.uk, uh, mm -hmm. heron like the bird, drums.co.uk. And um, on there it tells you all about the, the drum making workshops mm -hmm. that I do. And um, there's going to be a number of online course bits that are going up onto to that site at the moment as well, um, relating to kind of looking at ways of working with the shamanic drum, introductions to shamanic drumming um, and uh, a, a kind of an introduction to journeying will be on that one as well um, and there is another site that I've got that's sort of in in progress at the moment because it's switching from workshops and retreats to the online courses um, mm. but that one is jonathanweeks.co.uk okay I'll put both of them in the group and on the Great. page anyway if someone doesn't want to make their own drum or they can't get you can they by a drum that's been pre-made to their specifications, as it were. Yeah, yeah, and I, so I, I make drums that, that go on the website uh, um, for sale, which are just, um, which, which are already made. And some people see a drum and there is an immediate thing of, ah, that, that's really speaking to me. That's, that drum is, is the one that, that's, that's really calling to me to work with. And um, I also do drums uh, kind of where they're, they're they are made to order where people can say specifically I'm wanting this combination of energy so I, I've, I've talked about uh, uh, the hides that I, I work with for the drums um, I work with different woods for the hoops I bind stones into the handle um, just gonna grab one quickly to, to show you what I mean with that my drum has a, a rose quartz I chose a rose quartz to put in mine, and I think it was horse hide, but I can't remember what the frame was. When I, when I see it again, I'll uh, I, I may be able to tell you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there's this with the stones bound into the handle as well. There, um, this one here's a, a, a stag drum on an oak hoop with turquoise bound into the handle there. So if there's particular quality of energy that you're wanting from the drum or particular quality of spirit that you're wanting and a, 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 a combination of those. Um, what I what I do is I ask you to, to, you know, let me know those details and let me know what the prayer and intention is for the drum, for what for how you're wanting to work together. Um, and 
when I make the drum, I begin by kind of almost reading that out at the start of the prayer. And there's a couple of steps within the drum making where I, I, I focus in on that prayer that an intention that you've set for the drum. So that's that's weaved within the uh, weave within its energy that the spirit of the drum as it's coming into being can hear that prayer and intention um, and all of that is is on on the website on herondrums.co.uk um, there's a section on there uh, I think I call it bespoke drums or made to order drums it's but it's on the online shop awesome and is that one behind you printed is that a drum that's printed behind you this one here drawn on yeah yeah so um there are traditions around the world where they paint drums. So uh, in the um, uh, coastal Salish uh, kind of uh, peoples, nations, over a sort of in the, the west coast of the USA, um, sort of like Portland, Oregon State, um, Washington State, and up to Vancouver way, um, they have a tradition there of painting drums. And the Sami people in northern Scandinavia have a tradition of painting drums. Um, with this one here, I used, and they, 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 they use complicated paints or they use dyes of different things. With this one here, I used henna. And okay. I, I drew on a number of different symbols around the outside of the drum that reflected different parts of, yeah, d different, different elements of what's been brought into those journeys and those, those ceremonies. So, um, so that's what I use for that, it kind of in the same way as I'd use it on my own skin. You know, I don't like to put anything on the drums that I wouldn't use on my own skin. Uh, true, true. Yeah, but, I, but, I've, but I've hennaed myself, so it was a, a <laughs> hennaed drum. You'd be my daughter's best friend. She'd henna you from head to toe. <laughs> <laughs> but it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And I'm right in thinking that you you still do things like sage and um, mugwort and paland, um Palo Santo. I don't have Palo Santo these days, but definitely sage and mugwort are two that I work with all the time. They're, they're uh, ceremonial smudge herbs, and particularly at this time, you know, to keeping, you know, with everything that's going on, to be able to clear the energy in the house, to clear away stress and worry, um, and being able to help keep, keep uh, chilled, calm, and balanced. Um, every, every help we can get, you know, I'm, I'm smudging all the time and I know there's a lot of people who are ordering sage at the moment, I think kind of is, uh, is for the same reasons. Yeah, You've got it growing in your garden, haven't you, Susie? Yeah, I grow my own. It's obviously not the California <laughs> stuff, um, but I grow my own and dry it and then I've always got an abundant supply um, to do exactly that because I always sage, you know, Monday is a day where I do, um, you know, really good cleanse ready for the week. And then if you know anything's happened, you know if you listen to really down things on the news or whatever, I sage again. <laughs> now, now, just kind of uh, uh, referring back to what I was saying in the talk about right relationship. What's really beautiful when you've got the plant that you're growing there in your garden is mm -hmm. you have a relationship with the plant. Then you're not only yeah. just kind of burning the herbs, but you have that relationship with the plant, and you're able to kind of give your energy to it in the time that you're tending the soil, clearing away the weeds, looking after yeah. it, doing any pruning that you need to do, you're giving your energy to it. Um, and so there's, there's something really nice and reciprocal in there. And that's, that's generally what's taught within kind of these, these spiritual kind of uh, ways of working with herbs, these kind of uh, working with magical and, he and healing and cleansing herbs. Yeah. Is if you have what, you're, what you have there with that relationship, then it it's, builds that connection even, even more strongly. So that's so fantastic. Yeah, it's fantastic. We, the, um, we have lots of rosemary, bay, bay is just, I have so much bay. I think I've got lemon balm growing in the garden, but I, I need to look at that. But yeah, yeah, I've got the sage, the rosemary, basil and bay that I use a lot, but I will be expanding on that to, to help me within my business and within the practices that I'm doing as well. Because bay is great for clarity, isn't it? Great clarity herb. Yeah, it's another great clearing, clearing one as well. Yeah. Absolutely. So does anyone have any questions? Everybody's listening and they've gone really, really yeah, quiet, quiet today. What I, one of the things that I found fascinating was that I've always linked shamanism, shamanism to North American Indians. But to know that actually that's only a very sort of small part of it. And it's actually perhaps more predominant in other, other cultures. So that was, that was interesting and a real... Um, for me to find that out because um, yeah I always just 
auto I think it's an automatic thing mm. or just something that I I believed that that it was just part of that mm. it, it's it's often the picture that comes to mind when yeah. people hear the word yeah um, and for it is because for a long while um you know the the word shamanism sort of came into sort of academic language um, and they, they saw what was going on within these communities out in Siberia and said, oh, that's the same as what's going on over there. And that's the same as what's going on in there. So they kind of went to put the word on top of yeah. very different traditions, mm. um, all because they were, were earth based. And it's actually when we when we look at specifically what shamanism is within that culture, we realize ah, there are there are definitely kind of uh, other cultures that are doing it. But more broadly, what we see are these these animistic earth based traditions, mm. and some of them have have a shamanism, have a practice in there of connecting with the spirits in that way. Yeah. That's really, Debbie, really interesting. It is. Yeah. Debbie says, would you use the drum before a healing session to enhance the healing experience? Um, I use the drum during healing. So uh, I, there's, there are ways of working with the drum specifically within uh, within healing, where uh, you use it to move energy, to clear energy. Um, and those are all kind of different uh, uh, ways of working with the drum for drum healing that I, that I teach. Um, if you're just, if it's, you have your own drum and um, you're doing another form of healing where you're not using the drum for it, for being able to kind of help clear and balance and center and ground yourself beforehand, that can be the prayer that kind of you have within that round of drumming, that you just have a moment before to help you be centered and help you be kind of grounded and help you be connected um then then yeah definitely kind of it enhances that from for, for yourself puts you in a better state awesome and suchita says shamanism is too complex for me people who can practice it regularly i am in awe of them um there's a lot of uh you know, I, I've kind of described a lot of different bits with different cultures. Um, if we kind of get back to the simplicity, it's to do with the relationship that we have with spirit and the way in which we do that. And and building and strengthening to be in a good relationship with spirit is, is if I was to kind of bring it down into sort of a nutshell. And um, as with all of these, as you explore them more and as you develop them more, you find that there are different ways and different avenues and different doorways to explore and to develop. Um, but, but yeah, you know, the, if, the, if the aim of it is to be able to connect with spirits and to have a, a good relationship with the spirit around you, um, the, 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 the shamanism side of it is the methods that we, we use for that. And, uh, you know, the, in terms of the practices of journeying, the, then they're not complicated. There are kind of, there are, you know, there are kind of really kind of clear ways where you can learn how to do that. And so that's something I've been sharing for years. So, you know, if, if, if you're wanting to develop those practices, do get in contact because there, it is something that we all can do. Hmm. It doesn't need to be complicated, does it? You can start with one, one small thing that you do regularly and then add, build on it, yeah, yeah. Build on it and add something else. So it doesn't have to be complicated unless you want to be a shaman mm. but we can use the shamanic practices but again it's about bringing things into your life to change the things that you do around working with this world that we have with working with the environment and with making sort of those little changes um just to make everything so much better and so that we can all Sort of live in live in the world with without sort of um, all of this sort of um, I don't want to say pollution because a lot of it is pollution but I think it's around and I think now is a time where we need to be coming back to the natural way of living and for me it feels like it's it yes there are practices to it but I think if you can come back and do some little natural where living practice is each day you will you can build and go into that definitely yeah. you know there's the, it's, it's the sort of shift in perspective which is kind of you know is 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 all it is you know rather than seeing a um a forest or a bit of nature as a as a, a load of stuff or a place or a river where kind of is a place where uh, trolleys get chucked into and all the mm. rest of it it's kind of you know when you see these 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 places and things as friends 
and you build that sort of relationship with them, then your kind of your respect and your appreciation and, and how you relate to them changes. So it's kind of, you know, bit by bit, that, that it's a perspective change in there. Yeah. She's, uh, she's, she's a she's cheating test. <laughs> okay, that helps. I guess first step, so first step would be to simply connect with spirit. Second step would be to strengthen that connection. Yeah. Perfect. Um, Nikki says, I love how these things are coming back. Centuries ago, we would have been burned at the stake. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Debbie says, fascinating. Thank you. So I think, let me knock my phone off. Um, it's, it's been really, really interesting. It to, has. Yeah. Information there that I didn't know as well um so i think that you've given people a lot to think about because i think some things can be really really simple like just saging and clearing the energy of your environment of yourself and your drumming raises your vibration doesn't it so there are lots of simple practices that can have massive impact quickly mm -hmm. without you know without having to be bogged down with too much information overload mm. i think so awesome ah. so if anyone else has any questions let us know yeah. yeah yeah it's brilliant i should use my drum more and now i've spoken to Definitely. jonathan i'm going to <laughs> as i say we have the online drumming circles so you know that can prompt you yeah definitely and what day is that uh, the next one we had one last night and the next one is on the 28th 28th okay i'll find that on your page anyway so um i will get jonathan to share all of his links and bits and pieces that he wants to share both in the intuitive creator and on my page so that you can find him easily um if you need a drum you want to join the drumming circles whatever you need then you know do feel free to contact jonathan and ask him more questions i'm sure he'd love to answer them for you just a thought, Jonathan, if there was, and I don't know if there are, but if there was um, a beginner's book or an introduction book into shamanism for people who read, what would you recommend? Um, there, a lot of the, uh, the what are seen as the introduction books are um, now quite out of date. I'd say mm. there was kind of a number of them that kind of came out in the 80s that, that now we, we, we seem to in kind of contemporary shamanism have moved a long way away from. Um, what I'm putting together at the moment is, uh, which which will be kind of one of the free introduction courses, mm -hmm. which is just going to be a, an introduction to. Oh, wow. So, yeah, do kind of sign up for the details because I'm going to be putting together kind of a, a, a broad sort of picture of, of a, a, an introduction to that will kind of uh, give a bit more time to, to e explain some of the... the, the that sounds uh, good. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. Awesome. Mm. Oh, sorry oh bless you thank you <laughs> okay so we don't have any more questions at the moment i would like to remind you all that i have my learn to our own five days intuitively course uh starting on monday so if you want the information from that let me know are we doing readings today marion i don't know do we have time what's the time mr wolf well, it's six o'clock Five o'clock for you guys. Five o'clock for me, guys. Is there anybody who? I, why don't we both pull a card just, do, just for one yeah, each, just for the whole, for everybody? Yeah. Okay. So I am going to use angels and ancestors because I feel that they link rather nicely for today's and show. As you know, I always use my pendulum. And I got mermaids and dolphins that come up for me today. Um, so, so you go first and then I'll do a mermaid to dolphins. Okay, so I'm just going to ask what do we need to know collectively today? Yeah. Let's see what comes up. I love these cards. I use them quite a lot. So your card is arrow. Mm. Okay, and it says surround yourself with protective energy okay so now's a good time to perhaps do that little bit of healing raise your vibration sorry sandy says can you see my message no sandy i can't can you type it again 
to raise your vibration and look at ways that you can protect your energy. There's so much going on in the world today. And although we can't physically connect with different people and family, friends and all of those kind of things, our energy is kind of being sucked by the media, by the negativity that's going on. The planet is really trying to heal itself. There's been earthquakes, tornadoes, and goodness knows what else. So it's important to protect your energy. So now is a good time to look at those relationships around you. Get rid of the toxic ones, the draining ones, the people that are needy and, and really hold you back. Okay, this virus and everything that's going on is happening for a reason and it's giving us the opportunity to look at our lives, to look at the way we do things, to look at what it is that we want, what we want to create and how we can connect with the earth and heal the earth, how we can live pollution has gone down dramatically um we can really see that in italy italy has a plastics problem everything comes in plastic um and they don't help themselves but that's a whole different matter but now you can see the dolphins swimming um around venice the the canals are clear so we do need to pay attention to how the pollution has evaporated in this time um, of isolation um, and all of those things so do look at your energy how you're showing up in the world as well okay and protect your energy while all of these things are going on so that was rather long wasn't it yeah but <laughs> right well i don't know why but every time i've been choosing cards over the last couple of days and i've had my mermaids and dolphins ones up, my pendulum's been going potty over them. So they, need to they come really out. want to come out to play. So let's have a look and see what, what is the message? What do we need today from the mermaids and the dolphins that are swimming up the Venice Canal? Yes, I know. We, we really want to go oh. out of this lockdown. Positive energy. There we go. They always connect, don't they? They always mate? connect our cards. They always do. And again, it's just surrounding yourself with um, positive people, positive, positive energy. Stop watching the news. I know that I've stopped watching the news. Um, I perhaps watch five minutes of it in the morning just to find out what I need to know, if I need to know anything different. Um, if they're tightening the lockdown or if I don't buy newspapers. I haven't bought newspapers for about oh, 10 years. Wow. Yeah, I haven't bought a newspaper for about 10 years. So again, it's sort of keeping your positivity up, keeping your vibes. I mean, I am a naturally positive person anyway. And um, yeah, the comments I get from home about my positivity <laughs> are... Um, uh, we had a bit of a situation this morning where something happened and then a record come on the radio that just mirrored this situation so much like I just died laughing. It was just so funny. But yeah, just positive energy. Keep your vibes up. Um, gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. We always say that, you know, look for the good in something. You know, look for what you can see that is going to raise your vibration and keep you positive because that's what's going to get us through this. Mm. And really, Susie said it all with her card. Absolutely. Yeah. But it is funny, our cards. But we always do one like this. We um, They always come out the same, don't they? They always match. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We're always in in synchronism, is that a word? Synchronicity, yes. <laughs> Almost <laughs> as bad as you say in Shutita. Oh, I know. I just I'm so, I have to apologise to her every week because I just can't get it right. <laughs> um so i hope you enjoyed that message let us know how that resonated with you i will let you know if i make it to finish you, if you want. <laughs> so i think things are getting better here yeah. so hopefully and thank you thank you jonathan for such for being such a wonderful guest we really really enjoyed having you on loads of information and really interesting so yeah thank you i've learned so much Thank you very much for inviting me on here and thanks everybody who's asked some questions and uh, you know feel free to ask any more 
Absolutely. So I'll put this on replay. I'll put it on my YouTube channel as well. Of course, you can share it on your YouTube channel and wherever you like as yeah, well. There's so much information. Yeah. And Marion and I both look forward to your introduction to shamanism. Yes, yes, we would, have, we would both be on that. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, so it's great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. I hope that um, you got a lot out of today's show. Nikki says, thank you, Jonathan. Um, and um, the reading that we gave you today. Next week, we have Margaret West coming in, who's going to be talking all about angels. She is a fantastic, fantastic lady. She's an expert in crystals, angels, mediumship, um, channeling, and goodness knows what else. So really looking forward to talking to that. about yeah. angels next week um, as well. So if you've got any questions, please, you know, keep um putting comments we will check the comments i'll tag jonathan in anything that he needs to answer as well or of course you can contact him directly as well we'll put all his links in the page and in the group as well so thank you so thank much you. to everybody for joining us today i hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did and we look forward to catching up with you all again next week thank you bye love to you all bye bye